At the dawn of the 14th century, life in medieval Europe was evolving at a rapid pace. Cities were bigger, populations were growing, and trade networks were becoming so extensive that people were getting their hands on all kinds of crazy stuff. Provided that you weren't a serf, a slave, or a woman, life could actually be described as something similar to good. But advancement came at a cost, and Europe was about to get hit with the consequences of its actions in the form of a disaster unlike anything the world had ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Historodame, and today we're discussing what life was like during the Black Plague. While it might be true that Europe's expanding cities, population growth, and increased trade brought a lot of benefits for its people, these things also brought issues like overcrowding, poor sanitation, and trade routes that were basically a highway for tons of hot new diseases. Add that to the fact that people were literally dumping garbage and human waste into the streets, and you have an environment that is perfect for brewing a plague set to wipe out one-third of your population. Caused by a bacteria known as Yersinia pestis, the disease known as the Black Death can be traced back to somewhere in Asia, and found a stronghold in human populations through rodents carrying infected fleas. Though it has also been suggested that other parasites, such as lice, were responsible for the spread. It is difficult to pinpoint when exactly the plague made its way to Europe, though historians have come up with a few different suggestions. Some experts theorize that the plague had already been established in Europe for centuries prior to this point, and kept in small pockets of rodent populations, just waiting for the opportunity to spread further. Another interesting theory is that the plague first infected the trading city of Kaffa, when the Mongol army catapulted infected corpses into the city as a form of early biological warfare. It then traveled inland through trade routes and ships on the Mediterranean, until it eventually made its way to Italy aboard several ships that docked in Sicily. The people waiting to greet these ships were met with the horrifying discovery that most of the men on board were already dead, and those who remained were sick with a disease that caused black boils to sprout across their skin. In a panic, authorities attempted to banish the ships from the port, but little did they know the infection had already begun to spread. But regardless of how exactly it arrived, whether that be through obscure rodent populations or launched via corpse, by the year 1347, it was official. The plague had made its way to Europe, and disaster was on the horizon. Infection by plague could happen quickly, and the illness became increasingly worse over a 72-hour period before you either died or began to recover. Symptoms could include fever, chills, aches and pains, vomiting, and diarrhea, as well as large swellings all over the body that seeped blood and pus, each reaching around the size of an egg. These sores would eventually turn black, earning the disease the nickname the Black Death. The illness that we know as the Black Death today, however, is actually thought to be a combination of three different viruses. The bubonic plague was the most common, and was an infection of the lymph nodes, creating the signature black sores that the plague is known for. It was also not spread directly from person to person, but rather used rodents or fleas as a bridge between hosts. The second was the septicemic plague, which was an infection of the blood, that came with additional symptoms of gangrene and clotting. This type of plague was more commonly spread through flea or lice bites. The final virus was the pneumonic plague, which involved a severe infection in the lungs and intensive cough that could spread illness rapidly to other people. Your chance of survival greatly depended on which version you had. Those suffering from the bubonic plague could have a survival rate of around 40% while the other two infections were fatal in most cases. Due to the lack of medical knowledge at the time, there was little that could be done to help those suffering from the Black Death. Doctors used methods such as bloodletting and boil lancing, which were unsanitary and often made the risk of spreading infection worse. A quarantine of the infected was also attempted in order to help slow the spread, 
Although, in classic human fashion, as soon as a case was discovered, terrified individuals would flee the area, ruining all attempts at the quarantine and spreading the disease further. As the plague began to sweep Europe and the death toll rose, no one knew if they would be next. Those who were healthy avoided the sick at all costs. People isolated themselves in their homes, stores closed up shop, and in some cases, doctors even refused to see infected patients, in fear that they might catch the disease themselves. But only so much could be done in the densely populated cities. Some wealthy citizens fled to the country, in hopes that they might be spared from the plague's wrath. But their efforts only resulted in the disease being spread further and faster. It wasn't long before cities like Venice and London were so overrun with dead bodies that no one knew what to do with them. With many priests refusing to perform last rites, and little space to give plague victims a proper burial, wooden carts would wander the city, piled high with the corpses that they collected. Many who died from the plague ended up buried in mass graves that were dug in order to dispose of the infected bodies. With poor sanitation, a high death rate, and little in the way of medical knowledge that could help those who were ill, it seemed like the best that could be done was to help those who had yet to be infected. The only problem was that bacteria was still unknown in the 14th century, so no one had any idea of how the plague was actually spread. One popular theory was that it was spread through miasma, which was an invisible poison that was thought to be carried through the air by bad smells. And in medieval Europe, bad smells were pretty much everywhere. Once again, when you toss garbage in the street, that's to be expected. In order to combat this, people wore perfume or carried herbs and flowers to protect themselves. Others fled to the country seeking clean air, once again making the outbreak worse. Another theory that many held was that the plague was the wrath of God himself, and those who became infected were subject to his divine punishment. Their strategy was to pray that they and their families would be spared. But regardless of what you believed, the best that most people could do was isolate themselves in their homes and wait for the madness to end. It is estimated that the Black Plague killed around 25 to 30 million people, with around 30 to 50 percent of the population dead in cities affected, a loss that would take Europe around 200 years to recover from. As the dust settled and cities began to get the plague under control, those who had survived would be left with a world much different than the one they had known. After such a disaster, social unrest was widespread, and people were looking for someone to blame. Figures of authority in the church and government were suddenly being questioned by the greater population. After all, many believed that it was their poor leadership that allowed the plague to be so devastating. Other people turned to the tried and true practice of racism, and tried to blame Jewish populations for poisoning the water supply and causing the plague themselves, despite the fact that their better hygiene practices actually helped slow the spread of the plague in most areas. But despite the anger and devastation that the Black Death caused, once the worst of it was over, people actually began to see that it did have some benefits. Farmers suddenly found themselves in a position to demand higher wages, putting an end to practices like serfdom, where workers would get meager wages that barely paid off rent on land that was owned by the wealthy. But this time of prosperity wouldn't last. As the population began to recover, it was not long before those in charge attempted to return things to the way that they were. But now that the peasants had had a taste of a better life, they understandably revolted against the aristocracy for attempting to ignore their demands. This would have a domino effect all across Europe, resulting in several rebellions of the people, including major riots in Paris, Florence, and London. There was still a long way to go when it came to improving the life of lower-class people, but some positive changes were still made. The plague was not done with Europe yet, however, because it did attempt to rear its head again every few years or so. But thanks to improved sanitation and prevention measures, people were able to keep the disease at a manageable level. In fact, the Black Death is still around today, with the World Health Organization reporting around 1 to 3,000 cases annually. 
though thanks to antibiotics they can be easily treated. Now we only have our own plague to worry about. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like or a comment down below. If you want to see more content like this, you can also subscribe to my channel and keep up to date on all the fun history videos of the future. But for now, I bid you farewell.